Hey there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I've got a topic that actually springs from a request on the Dynamo forums that I answered recently and I really liked the solution that I found for a problem and wanted to share it because I think it's got some use. In this case, uh, someone wanted to find out how they can compare model changes uh, between different versions of a model and they wanted to find it out with some degree of tolerance applied. So whilst there are some custom packages like data shapes which do have ways of comparing model changes, in this case a tolerance isn't applicable. So I did find a really quick and easy method to use um, which I think is really handy in this case because if you use methods that are too precise they can take too long. Having said that the method I use is a little bit what I'd call loose so it won't necessarily always give you an accurate representation, but in most scenarios it will. What we're gonna do is actually use the elements bounding boxes and compare their centroids, because in most cases when an element moves, it's typically going to update its centroid as well. So in this case, you're only gonna need one package today, which is the bimorph nodes package, which we're gonna to use to collect um, linked elements in this case, and we're gonna do it by category. So without further ado, let's jump in. So in this case, I've taken a fairly simple reference model um, that you can probably reproduce quite easily. It's just a set of walls with doors in them. And let's say we want to compare which doors have moved um, because we're focusing on a particular category. So this is my before model. And what I've done is just made a copy of it, moved some walls, moved some doors, deleted some doors and added some doors in the new model, which is this one here. What I'm going to do is now link the old model into the new model. I'll just navigate to my current working folder and this will enable us to be able to access the linked model. So in this case, the before model is linked. So we can see that half toned in this case. What I've done is in the visibility graphic settings, I've also half toned and underlaid this. And I've also added some view filters. So I've made some filters for matching, moved and new. So in this case, it's gonna check for door comments saying, is the, dom the comment new? Is it moved? Is it matching? What I've done is applied those comments to filters. So I'm overriding the color to detect when things have changed using filters. But what I'm gonna do now is using Dynamo, I'm gonna compare the linked model and the new model. And I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that if these elements are in fact the same elements, they will have a matching element ID. So this is uh, pretty much the key to the whole workflow, just comparing by retrieving them with their matching IDs. So I'm gonna open up Dynamo and we're just gonna get started. So we're gonna begin by collecting all of our doors in our active model and also in our linked model as well. So what I'll do is get a category by name. And I'm gonna, in this case, just get the category of doors. You could use a dropdown if you wanted to compare different categories at the same time. Um, I'm also gonna get a node from Biomorph nodes, which is link element of category. So this is gonna get all elements of a particular category from a Revit link. So I am in this case gonna select a model element and I'm gonna select my link instance, which is this. And then from my link instance, I can get all those doors. And now I have my linked door instances, which I can also get the geometry from or the bounding box from as well. I'm also gonna use an all elements of category to get the ones from my non-linked model, in this case, my live model. So I can see I have a different number of doors. What I've actually done is added a couple of new doors, which I'm gonna to wanna to detect as well. So we're gonna be using their element IDs in order to see if they exist and also where they're positioned. So in this case, I'm gonna use the element.id node. And I'm firstly gonna get the IDs of the link elements. I'm also gonna get the IDs of the live elements. And we'll see that some of these element IDs line up because they are the same element as before. Now we're gonna to need to put these in the same order to make sure we can compare them properly. So first of all, I need to check which elements actually exist in the new model and in the old model as well. So I'm firstly gonna use a list.contains node. And I'm gonna check if in my old list of elements or my new list of elements, do the old elements still exist? From here, I'm gonna get a filter by Boolean mask, and I'm gonna go and filter my element IDs that do exist in the new model. And in this case, um, I'll just double check, I might need to set that to longest lacing. Yes, there we go. So we can see in this case, we do actually have two doors which are new in this model, and then we have a lot of other ones which aren't, so ones that exist in both the new and the old model as well. 
So we're gonna filter those and we're also gonna go and filter the elements themselves. Now, if you know you are potentially going to be having a new elements in the old linked model, you might potentially have to use another technique which is gonna go and get the corresponding linked elements that relate to the ones in the new model we're going to look at because they might not be in the same order. So what I'm gonna do here is find the index of these IDs. So I'm gonna take the ones that do exist in the new model and I'm gonna find where they occur in this case, in the original list of IDs. And in this case, I now know that all of these IDs, um, I believe I've done that right, all of these IDs do occur at those indices. Now I think I might actually need to check where those indices occur in the original list actually. So I need to check in the old list. Yes, that's what I need to do. Once I have these, I can go and get the matching item from the linked elements that contain that specific ID. And now I should have the same 14 doors in the new model and the linked model for comparison. What I can do now is get their bounding box by element. So this is quite an efficient little node. It doesn't take too long to run. Um, and I can also just go and do the same for the doors in the current model. And we're gonna be able to use these to compare whether those elements centroids have moved. So this is gonna be the center of their bounding box. So I'm gonna convert their, their bounding boxes to cuboids so we can find the center of the cube. So in Dynamo, I should now have the bounding boxes represented like this. And we can see that some of those have actually moved. So what I'm gonna do is get their centroid using solid centroid to get the point at each of these. And if I turn off the preview for these cuboids, I'll see now I'm dealing with points. And we can see some of them have moved, some of them haven't. So in this case, we can use the geometry distance to node to find the distance between those points before and after. We're doing like for like, so we should be able to expect to line them up with a lacing. Now, some of these elements have moved with a very fine tolerance. Notice in this case, some of these elements are only three millimeters apart, for example. Um, so we're gonna wanna set a tolerance of maybe say five centimeter, five millimeters in this case, let's say. So I'm gonna add a number. And I'm gonna say that we only care about things that are greater than say five in this case. I'm gonna check if these distances are greater than five. If they haven't moved, we'd expect the distance to be around about zero. So anything with a true, we can see has actually moved. So quite a lot of elements have um, in this case. So what we're gonna do is filter our list of elements that do exist in both models by that mask. So we're gonna come back here to our in list on our doors, and we're gonna filter this by whether it's moved. And we should have two lists. In this case, the in list has moved, I believe, yes, and the out list hasn't moved, it's still the same. We also have doors back here, which are new. So we're gonna to wanna to set the comments of these three sets of doors, so the filters pick them up in Revit. So I'm gonna do an element set parameter by name, on my out list, and I'm gonna to switch to manual mode. My parameter in this case is comments, and my value will be uh, new, I think in this case. I'll just double check, yes, new. So we're gonna set those to new. I'm gonna copy this block and use it over here as well. So first of all, the elements in our in list have moved. So we're gonna say moved. We're gonna reuse this code block and I'm just gonna add an extra row. And in this case, we can say that the other condition is matching, the elements match. So this is gonna set the ones that have moved and this one is gonna set my out list, which are the ones that match. So the value in this case is actually matching. So when I run this, I should expect to see the filters pick up the comments of these elements to see which ones have moved. So if I run this, there we go. And we can verify this as well. We can see this door is new and this door is new. We can see in this case, this door has moved, as has this one, as has this one, as has this one. So have these, but in this case, we can find some doors, you know, moved maybe ever so slightly. I think this one has a discrepancy of about three millimeters, but because of our tolerance, in this case, they haven't actually been detected as moving. 
Likewise, we'll find some that have and haven't moved. This one is matching. Um, in this case, that one matches exactly, but this one is off by more than the tolerance. In this case, 600 millimeters. If we increase our tolerance to maybe, say, 800, we'd expect to see some of these are now matching because they fall within the tolerance distance. So if you were running this in Dynamo Player, you could make this an input and call this tolerance millimeters. And we could come back to the start. We could have an input for select model link instance. And we could also have an input, which is a categories drop down because we can compare more than just doors with this workflow. Anything that generates geometry and has a centroid effectively. So I can say pick a category. And this script should now actually be compatible with Dynamo Player. So if I save this script to my desktop, call this compare models, and I boot up Dynamo Player, we could also run this on the walls in the model as well to see which walls have been modified in extent in respect to their centroid. A lot of them will have actually been modified here because a lot of these walls have actually moved. So this one, for example, will probably be moving, but we could set a tolerance. For example, we know that that's about 800. So half of that centroid shift is about half a meter. So we could set a tolerance of say a meter to just pick up the walls that have you know moved a lot. So if I just open up Dynamo Player, go to my desktop, compare models, open up my inputs that I've just picked. And we'll already have some inputs predefined here. So for example, I can pick my link again. I can say my tolerance is a meter and maybe this time we pick walls. Run my script. In this case, I think I've generated errors because there might be a, a bounding box error in this case. Um, so I might potentially just run this across doors again. I might just double check why this method doesn't work for walls in this case. Because I did think that walls would generate a bounding box, but they don't seem to in this case. So if I switch my Dynamo input to walls and I run, in this case, ah, of course, <laughs> category by name, we need to switch that. Now it should work. So I believe that walls should generate centroids just like them as well. Keep in mind that walls, their centroid will also be determined by their Z offset. So you may potentially want to flatten these points down to a common plane if you're not thinking of considering whether they've moved in a Z aspect as well. Okay, let's set a tolerance of a meter. Select our instance and run. Now in this case, I think it's a projected filter. It's, oh, it's only applied to doors currently. So we need to also apply these filters to walls. There we go. So I can see that this wall in this case has moved. This one fell within the tolerance, so it's matching. This wall hasn't changed, so it's matching. Um, this one hasn't changed. And these two are new. So we can see that this method is, is fairly applicable to any category that generates bounding boxes. Um, in this case, I guess I, I might just show you quickly how you'd pull these elements to a common plane, because I think that's a really handy technique, potentially. Um, so, if you, so you only compare them on the Z plane. It's not too hard to do. In this case, we just need to go to our centroids. And I think in this case, we can probably pull the geometry to a plane. I'll just double check what pulling options we have. So we've got pull onto plane for curves, pull onto surface. I think points, we only have a custom node for it. So what I would recommend doing instead is to create a code block, do dot x dot y, and then just put in p for a variable. This will just get the x and the y value. And then we can go point by coordinates, and we're just going to use the X and the Y coordinates. So we're effectively removing the Z component of these points. And now these points will sit upon the same Z plane. So if your balls have changed in height or your door's been offset, this isn't going to influence whether the door has moved um, in plan. So it's up to you whether you want to use uh, the true centroid, or in this case, the flattened centroid, just as an as, as an X Y component. But that's um that's pretty much it. So hopefully that was a a useful script um, and can help you compare some models more easily. So there we go. Hopefully that was a useful little example of when you can use something a little bit more stupid to solve a problem um, that means it's a little bit quicker to use 
and even though it's not necessarily 100% reliable, um, for the most part it will probably give you a good result. So um, there we go, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks, take care, bye.